Hello, and welcome to the MSU School of Social Work Field Instruction Instructor Orientation. This orientation will provide you with a general overview of the field program, as well as what you can expect as a field instructor. We have some unique initiatives and opportunities for our MSW students in the program that allow them to specialize in certain areas as well as earn certificates in some of those specializations. There is more information on the Field Education website about these opportunities for students. If you have any questions about any of them, please contact one of the field coordinators. In addition to the certificates and specializations, we also have a small number of scholarships and other initiatives for students interested in healthcare, policy advocacy, and race equity. If you would like more information on any of our certificates, specializations, scholarships, or initiatives, please feel free to contact the field office. The purpose of field education at both the undergraduate and graduate level is to provide students the opportunity to gain greater self-understanding and awareness as it relates to the development of their professional identity. Field instruction also provides opportunities for students to integrate what they're learning in the classroom into the professional environment and develop competency in practice. Undergraduate students engage in a single generalist placement during their final year in the program, which provides them with both micro and macro experiences. For graduate students, field is 28% of the graduate degree requirement, so it is a large and very important component of the learning experience. Students in our regular MSW program will have two placements, with each placement lasting two 15-week semesters. The first placement is generalist practice, with the student undertaking both micro and macro practices, whereas for the second placement, the student is delineating between the clinical or macro practice and the placement reflects that concentration. Advanced standing students already have a BASW and they enter directly into what would be a second placement focusing on their concentration area. Advanced standing students complete one seven week summer placement and then two 15 week summer semesters. In most cases, all three placements are done within the same organization. As I've already mentioned, undergraduate students have just one placement. That placement lasts two 15-week semesters during the, their final year of the program. And again, that focuses on both the micro and macro practice with the goal to develop basic generalist practice skills. Because so much of the student's learning, student's learning career is influenced by their field experience, we are happy that we have field instructors throughout the state that are interested in teaching and mentoring students. Our field instructors provide service back to the profession through assisting our students to learn about the work within the community, and most importantly, to integrate their academic learning with their professional field experience. In accordance with our accrediting body, the Council on Social Work Education, or CSWE, the field office looks for field instructors who meet the expectations shared here on the slide. There are times we allow field instructors who do not meet the specifications listed to provide instruction to our students. In those cases, it falls upon the school to reinforce the social work perspective, which we do by providing additional supervision by licensed social workers. For our undergraduate students, we utilize a weekly field seminar class to provide the, super, to, to provide the supervision, and for graduate students, it is provided through 10 hours of integrative field seminar each week, semester. There are a number of benefits that come with acting as a field instructor for the school. One of the most notable is a reduced cost to continuing education units to support the field instructor's continued professional development. Additionally, 
there are a number of other benefits you might find of interest that are listed here, including access to an MSU Net ID, which would allow you access to the university's Zoom service, which is similar to Skype, and other online meeting platforms for free. If you are interested in learning more about the benefits of being a field instructor, please contact our administrative support staff. Here is a list of our key players, including you. Before we delve more into your role, I'd like to touch on the roles and responsibili responsibilities of the other partners listed. Students have a big role to play in their own success, and we appreciate field instructors assisting students in developing important professional organization and time management skills. All of our students who are field and who are in field are required to complete a significant number of hours in their placement. During the fall and spring semesters, students in field are completing 240 hours each semester. Advanced standing students who start their field placement during MSU's second summer session are additionally completing a summer semester of field. I will discuss the summer semester requirements in more detail on the next slide. Overall, this works out to, to approximately two days in field each week or 17 hours or 16 hours per week. Additionally, all students are participating in an integrated field seminar. As mentioned, our BASW students attend a regularly scheduled weekly one hour class led by a licensed social worker. Our MSW students participate in 10 hours of integrated seminar led by a licensed social worker. One thing to know is that MSW students are able to count their time in integrative seminar towards their total hours for the semester. BASW students do not. At the beginning of each semester, students are expected to provide a copy of their practice course syllabus to the field instructor. At times they forget but it is a good practice to, to encourage as it provides you, the field instructor, with information on what work the student is doing in class and what assignments they will have to complete. There might be opportunities for their assignments and class activities to cross over with their field work and they can be integrated into the learning tool. Throughout the semester, students are focused on completing their activities under the supervision of their field instructor. And at the end of the semester, the field instructor takes responsibility for completing the student's evaluation, which the student then reviews and signs. In addition to completing their learning activities throughout the semester, students are expected to keep both their field instructor and their liaison apprised of any issues that might impact their progress in field. We appreciate the fact that our field instructors provide supportive environments for students to be able to share any challenges that are impacting their progress. As I mentioned, advanced standing students complete a seven week summer semester of field. The requirements are similar to the requirements of a 15 week regular semester, except that the student completes only 120 hours of field education with five hours of integrated field se seminar led by a licensed social worker. So now let's talk about your role as the field instructor. You are the vital link between the students and your organization. Your guidance on how the student can be successful within the organization is invaluable and your assistance on helping them connect to various aspects of the agency is important. Helping the student to get settled and connected within the first few weeks is a great way to start the field experience. In addition to getting them settled, we're also asking you to make an ongoing commitment to the student by meeting them with them for regular supervision on a weekly basis. Our goal for each of our students is that they receive one hour of supervision with their field instructor each week. We recognize that this may not be possible every week, and at times, this may look more like 30 minutes in a car, 20 minutes on the phone, and 10 minutes having a cup of coffee. But we are shooting for a consistent supervisory presence for each of our students. 
This is especially important at the beginning of the semester when students are undertaking the development of their learning agreements and will be looking for you to help in developing those. Additionally, we ask that all field instructors meet with students mid-semester for a specific session called a mid-semester verbal evaluation. This is truly a verbal evaluation and we do not require that anything be submitted to the school. We ask that this time be spent in review of the student's learning agreement and their progress in their field experience up to this point, including the provision of a grade if you were to give one at this time. The mid-semester verbal evaluation helps prevent surprises at the end of the semester where the student may feel that they were proficient in areas not identified as such by the field instructor. This gives an opportunity for the field instructor to provide feedback to the student on how they can improve toward the grade they're trying to achieve. Also, we encourage instructors to use this time to check with the student on activities and hours they've completed. This is important if the student is not completing an agency required timesheet. As mentioned previously, students must complete 240 hours of field in the fall and spring semesters. If it looks like a student is behind in their hours at the mid-semester point, it will be important to have a plan in place as students are not able to make up hours after the semester is over. It must have six sevenths or 206 hours of all their work done to even qualify for an incomplete. The field coordinator and liaison should be notified and are responsible for approving any plans with or changes in time. Lastly, the field instructor is expected to write the end of semester written evaluation of the student progress while in placement. We'll be covering that more in depth in just a moment. The School of Social Works field education website has a page dedicated to field instructor resources at the website on this slide. I encourage you to go there and review the resources. Previously, I mentioned the integrative field seminars in which both BASW and MSW students will participate. These seminars are led by field liaisons. The school's field liaisons are there as a support to both you and the students. Liaisons meet with groups of students during integrative field seminars to provide guidance and monitor the education progress of students, including ensuring that all required forms are submitted on time. We ask our liaisons to connect with the field instructors to schedule a face-to-face -face visit on site, or if not feasible, a phone call or Zoom meeting. Liaisons are available to you whenever you have a question regarding expectations for field or if you're in need of consultation, support, and problem solving while working with the student interning with you. We strongly encourage you to communicate with them if any issue arises with a student you're working with. They are there to be a resource for you and also act as a communication line between the agency and the school. Field coordinators are individuals working for the school. The job of the field coordinator is to help match students with the appropriate field opportunities and provide training and support for both field agencies and liaisons. Field coordinators work with liaisons to ensure that all required documents documentation is completed and they review and assign field, final field education grades. At times, field coordinators intervene with agencies and students when there is an issue with the that the liaison needs support and addressing. While the liaison is the initial direct contact, field coordinators also may become involved if needed. The director of field education provides leadership to the field office and represents field education in various capacities, not only within the MSU School of Social Work, but at state and national levels as well. The director connects with, to you as field instructors through our various advisory groups. 
If you are interested in becoming more involved with our advisory groups and are available to provide your input and expertise into our learning process, you are encouraged to connect with the director. The director of field education is responsible for hiring field fa faculty, including field coordinators and field liaisons, and provides supervision and support to the field coordinators. The administrative assistant is responsible for carrying out the day-to-day -day administrative operations of the field education office. This includes collecting and maintaining student information and, document, and documents related to the field education, such as confirmation forms, processing agency affiliation agreements, and emailing field-related correspondences on behalf of, of the field team, such as match emails and event reminders. In addition, the administrative assistant is responsible for functions related to the intern placement tracking system, often referred to as IPT. This includes establishing user accounts, assisting account holders with resetting their user login information, helping users navigate the system, and carrying out IPT functions. These functions include activating field education forms, including field applications, the LET and the process recording form. Reflective supervision is the model that we encourage our field partners to utilize when working with our students. We ask field instructors to not only discuss their work product with students, but also the student's professional development as a social worker. This includes helping the student understand what they bring to a situation that can either help or hinder the change process. Field instructors can dialogue with students in a way that promotes an open sharing or thought of thoughts, feelings, and self-observations. And field instructors can provide important feedback for students that encourages their continued growth and self-reflection. The process recording is a time-honored method for helping the student to become more aware of their role in the change process. Each semester, including the summer semester for advanced standing students, students are expected to complete the process recording form that is available to them on IPT. Students are responsible for writing it and you are responsible for giving feedback. Once the student has completed the form, you will receive a notification that it is available for your review. Listed here on this slide are the areas you may want to address. We cannot have eyes on students the entire time that they're on site and it's also not the purpose but we do want to ensure the student gets feedback, even when you, as the field instructor, are not present with the student while they are performing a professional role. Students often feel nervous about decisions and, and interactions. This is an opportunity for you to validate or correct student engagement with stakeholders. This is the layout of the form that is available on IPT. Again, students will complete this on IPT and you will receive a notification that it is ready for your review. Of course, you are encouraged to add your comments, but then also review it verbally with the student during supervision. Once you've reviewed it and signed off on, the, on it, the field liaison will be made aware that it has been completed. Now that we've talked about roles, supervision, and process recordings, I would like to have a more detailed di discussion of the field curriculum and the LET, or learning and evaluation tool. We created the LET with input from many stakeholders and curriculum experts to meet the education standards set forth by the Council on Social Work Education. CSWE requires that all accredited schools of social work teach the holistic competency-based curriculum that they have established. The LET reflects our overall learning goals for the students. The expectation is that students learning 
experience is holistic and that their demonstration of competence is informed by the appropriate knowledge, values, skills, and cognitive and effect, affective processes. These four areas of learning are infused throughout the field and curriculum. We ask field instructors to be cognizant of these when helping students design the activities they will complete through their field placement, which we'll, we will discuss on, on the next slide. The LET, which combines both the activities to be completed as well as the evaluation of those activities, is to be done each semester. Students are expected to initiate the completion of the activity development portion of the LET, but of course this is something that should be done in conjunction with and in conversation with you, the field instructor. Activities developed should follow the SMART goal development process. Activities should be specific and should integrate the dimensions of learning we just discussed on the previous slide. Activities should be measurable, meaning that there's a way to say that they were completed or not. They should be achievable and realistic, which I think is an area where field instructors can be particularly helpful. Students often want to achieve a lot within what is really a short time period. Field instructors can help facilitate a discussion of why of what it what is really possible within a one semester window lastly activities should be time bound this can be pretty easy since of course everything has a time frame of the end of the semester but the student and you could also develop more specific time frames throughout the semester which can be helpful in providing the student direction and focus during their time in the organization. It also helps during weekly supervision in determining what has and hasn't been completed and why. Lastly, assignments in the learning agreement can be tied to a student's classroom assignment if it is felt that there is a mutual benefit. For example, a student, a classroom assignment may might require a student to assess a client group system, etc., and write a paper on that assignment. That same assessment requirement could also be a part of the learning agreement. Similarly, a student might need to conduct a policy analysis and draft a paper. That analysis might be relevant and beneficial for your agency as part of its work, in which case it would be appropriate to have it as part of the learning agreement. What is key here is how the curriculum can be integrated into the real world of the field experience. In just a second, I'm going to show you what the LET tool looks like, but I wanted to mention first that the competencies and behaviors on the tool will remain the same throughout the internship, this, but the student activities will change from one semester to the next. In this slide, I am showing a section from the LET for one of the competencies. The LET is a form within IPT. Students are notified via email when the LET is available to them, usually two weeks before a semester begins. Students are required to complete the LET, so it is not possible for field instructors to write the activities for the semester. The reason for this is that we want the students to complete the tool to provide a check for you that they, understand, that they understand the plan that you discussed. As a reminder, students should be discussing the completion of the tool with you. Overall, students are working toward complete, achieving nine competencies. For right now, we'll just focus on, a comp on competency one, and then particularly, and pardon, excuse me, and in particular, we'll look at the column on the far left and the column on the far right. On the far left, you'll see that the competency that we are working to develop within the student is listed in the upper left-hand corner. Below the competency are boxes that describe the behavior that have been identified as steps in processes or processes that lead to the development of the competency. The box areas are where students will draft the activity 
that they will complete that meets the behavior above it. On the far right hand corner are the dimensions of learning that have been identified for the behavior. This should help the student focus their activity by helping them to be aware of what dimensions of learning they're undertaking. For example, this first behavior focuses on knowledge and skill building. Therefore, the written activity should be reinforcing the development of those dimensions. Once activities are identified, written, and agreed to by you and the student, the student will sign the document. You will then receive a notification that the document is ready for you to sign. After you have signed it, it will go to the field liaison for a final review and sign off. Now that we have discussed the development of the learning activities, I want to turn to the evaluation of the student's progress through, through those activities on developing competence for each behavior. At the end of the semester, we ask field instructors to evaluate the student's performance in field. Each field instructor will need to locate the LET, which can be found under My Forms, in the Interim Placement Tracking System. There are three parts to completing the end of the semester evaluation. The first part of the evaluation is to assess the student's performance on each behavior based on the activities located on the LET form. Next, the overall competency skill level is rated. And last, a final semester grade is recommended based on the guidelines of the grading policy. These are the guidelines to help you in determining the student's performance on a behavior. As you can see in the slide, the student can be evaluated as skill outstanding, meaning that they performed at an advanced level, responded to complex situations with a holistic view, and not in terms of individual aspects. Skill meets standards, meaning that the student demonstrated adequate ability and was successful. Skill needs improvement for the student who did not demonstrate the ability to be successful. Or un unacceptable skill, meaning the student causes a potential risk of harm within a competency area. There are a couple things I, that I want to point out that relate to assessing proficiency of behavior that also tie back to the creation of the learning activities. First, we don't have a not applicable option for the comp completion of behavior. This reinforces the idea of creating achievable activities for students. It may also require some creativity in assessing a student's ability. If it looks like a student isn't going to be able to complete an activity, consider another activity that was completed that would meet the behavior, or, or secondly, if there is another way to achieve the behavior, say through role play or discussion, you might need to consider that. For a quick review, here again is a screenshot of the let. Those three columns in the center with the circled headings are where you assess proficiency for each of the behaviors based on the student's performance on the activity listed. Because you can edit the evaluation throughout the semester, you could use the ranking during the mid-semester verbal evaluation to show students where they are currently and discuss what they need to accomplish to move towards the next level. One last thing that I want to address is that it is going to be less likely that a student during the first semester of their field experience is going to be outstanding. Of course, each student is different, and you may have someone who is astute in their practice, but more often, students are going to be in the realm of meets standards. Once you've completed the evaluation of the individual behaviors, you will be considering the student's overall competency skill level. Considering their competency skill level goes beyond just how they ranked in, on their behaviors and also includes all of your evaluations and observations of the student and other relevant factors. There may be something that the student did that relates to the competency that goes above and beyond what was expected and was not included as an activity. 
Occasionally, there might be a time when a student completed all of their activities, but there were some additional behaviors related to the competency that raised concern for you. All in all, we ask that you rate the student's skill, skills for this competency. Through you, we are measuring the student's overall competence for skill in this area. Here, the ranking is based on the student's overall level of skill related to the competency, not just the ranking of the behaviors. The school selected field courses to measure this dimension of learning to demonstrate the level of our effectiveness in meeting CSWE educational standards. So when you're ranking the overall competency skill level, you are taking more than just the completion of the activities and the ranking of the behaviors into account. For each competency, we are asking you to select a ranking from one to four on the ranking scale. Additionally, and equally important, we are asking that you provide the student with the narrative information in two areas. The first is on the student's additional accomplishments, which is especially important in those cases where you've ranked the student's behaviors as meet standard, but because of your additional observations that reflect the student's abilities with the entire competency, you, are, you want to rank them as a four, skill outstanding, rather than a three, skill meet standards. Without that additional narrative, the help, to help us understand your decision, we are unable to support the changing rank, changed ranking. Similarly, your narrative is important when there are areas for student improvement. If the student is ranked as skill needs improvement or unacceptable skill, your specific recommendations for how they can improve is very important for their professional development. Once you have reached, one time, once you have all the behaviors and competencies ranked, and once you have the conversation with the student about the evaluation, you will finalize it by recommending a final grade based on the completion of required, out, required hours, the ratings you provided, the student's attendance and participation in integrated field seminars, and the grading scale and evaluation policy. If the student is an undergraduate student, they should be in the field 240 hours over the course of the semester. Their time spent in field seminar does not count toward the 240 hours. The graduate students, they're able to apply their integrated field seminar to their field hours. So they might actually be in field for 230 hours with 10 hours of integrated field seminar. We ask that the field instructor include those 10 hours on what they list as the hours worked in field on the left form. In the field if the field instructor has any questions regarding the completion of those 10 hours, please contact the student's liaison. This slide covers the grading criteria and is also included in the field manual for both the student and the field instructor to review at any time. The field manual also lists the description of the student for the student achieving a zero point or an incomplete, which I'm including, which I'm not including here for space reasons. I won't go into a lot of detail about grading policy, but I do want to point out that graduate students are required to have a 3.0 and field to progress through the program. If you are working with a student who is heading for something less than a 3.0 at the mid-semester mark, please work with your liaison so that they can work, try to work more with the student and be supportive. The field coordinator is also available for support and should be notified right away for significant concerns. If you're working with a BASW student, please note that their grading requirements are different. BASW students are required to maintain at least a 2.0 per MSU policy. Again, if you have a BASW student who at mid-semester is working at below a 2.0 level, please reach out to their liaison, who is also their sem seminar instructor, so that they can provide some additional educational guidance to the student. 
we're almost at the end of the presentation. And I just want to quickly let you know that there is a fair amount of information available to you on our website, including the field education calendar, available at this link on this page. Some dates you will want to be mindful of are the semester start dates, learning agreement due dates, and evaluation due dates. Our main website also includes links to our field education manual, a link to access IPT and information on agency responsibilities. Within the, that page is another site that includes specific, specific information for field instructors, including this presentation, pre-placement and in-placement resources, and general resources, re including a link to the NS, NESW Code of Ethics and the United Nations Declaration on Human Rights. Lastly, if for any reason you have questions, please contact the field coordinator for your student. If you're unsure who that is, please contact our administrative assistant, who will be happy to direct you to the right person. In closing, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this training video and for your continued support of Michigan State University School of Social Work, BASW, and MSW students. You are an important part of our team, and your work with our students is invaluable. Thank you.